Hey everyone, Sophia here from My Great Challenger. Welcome back to my channel. And yes, it's a new series. And this one, <laughs> if you thought my series were too long, this one is probably gonna last for the rest of the year. <laughs> Welcome to Getting Things Done Home Edition. This is episode one. And you're probably wondering, what, what is this all about? Okay. So in January, I got involved with um, the Artful Agenda. It's a uh, digital planner. I'll put the, all the info down below, but I'm gonna show you some you know, clips here and there of what the agenda looks like and how I use it. So I use it like a regular agenda, you know, all my appointments, but it's only for personal stuff. I still use a paper planner, a file of facts for uh, my work related stuff. For various reasons, I like to keep it separate. So uh, the Artful Agenda gives you an opportunity to do all sorts of lists, um, you know, to-do list and then goals with mini goals in between. And I really, really like that because I am, believe it or not, goal driven. <laughs> so what I did was walk around my house at the beginning of the year and I made an entire list of everything I saw in the house that needed to be addressed, everything. So some room may only have two or three things. Other rooms may have 15 things. And I've started, you know, here and there to take care of it, but it's already half of the year and I really, really want to not only get this done, but I also want to encourage you to do the same. Some of the jobs are very small, so I may be able to do five jobs in one session. Uh, other jobs require repair, um, painting, stripping, doing over basically. So we are in the dining room and one of the things, because the list is pretty long, <laughs> in the dining room, one of the things that I've wanted to do was change the sheer curtains. Um, if you recall the sheer curtains that I currently have, you can see them. I purchased for nine bucks at the um, thrift store and from the get-go they were too short. I knew they were too short, okay? And I said, well, you know what, let me live with them for a while. And then the for a while ends up being a couple of years. And since I'm making some changes this year, um, I'm going in a lot of new and positive directions. I've decided that it was time for me to change the overall look of the dining room. Um, do not freak out or get overjoyed. It will remain red. I'm just saying, because I know I've had a lot of people asking me, when am I changing the color of the dining room? I don't know why I would want to do that uh, since that's the color that Scott and I both chose and want to keep. Um, we love our red dining room. So I'm not changing the red color. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> what I'm changing is the curtains. Um, and it's a good thing I'm doing this today because there's other things that need to be done. It's not just the sheer. I'm going to change the panels as well. And I'm also going to change a broken shade on the window that goes into the driveway that has been broken for years. We can't lift it. So no light <laughs> comes into uh, that window. So it's, um, it's about time I take care of all this stuff and I'm taking you along again in hope to inspire you to change things up a little bit. Your decor doesn't have to be a permanent fixture. Um, that's what trends are for, to, for you to change things around. I like what I like and eclectic, you may want to call it that way. Um, there's a lot of things in this dining room that are um, passed me down or inherited or found on the street and we really do like it. I'm just not happy with the window treatment. Let's dive into it. I'm going to show you what I purchased, what I plan on doing. Um, this may actually take me more than a day, but it's going to be all in one video. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, welcome to the dining room. I know some of you are sick and tired of seeing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Listen, my house is always evolving, okay? So yes, the red walls, here they are. This is Red Tomato by Bear, and I forgot the name of that one, but I think it's Persimmon. Uh, so there's a little bit of everything, 
okay? And here's the window treatment. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit. I'm trying not to be backlit here, hold on. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the window treatment. So these are the infamous uh, sheer panels, well, lace panels uh, that I purchased at the thrift store. And I really like them. I think they're really pretty. They're more Victorian than Art Deco, which is, um, well, 1920s, 1930s, which is the age of my house. But again, uh, we have a problem here. I do tad too short, almost a foot uh, in some areas. And then I have these here. Let me see if I can show them to you a little bit better. Okay, so these are really cool. This is actually um, real upholstery interior fabric that I had purchased a remnant for. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough. Mom made the curtains for me one time that she um, visited. Uh, I think it was a Christmas years ago. And there wasn't enough, so we just did uh, decorative panels. So these do not close all the way in, okay? They're just for decor purposes. So I have this one window here. That's two windows, really. And then I have this one window here. Um, and the problem with this one, aside from, again, a shear that's too short, is that this one here is broken. And it's been broken quite some time. So I'm gonna replace it today and I'm replacing the curtains. So as I knew that I was going to change the window treatment, I really thought about um, not just the look, but what I wanted to do with this. Um, we've lived in this house and the red dining room for a good 10 years now, a little bit over 10 years. And I know what works and what doesn't work. Um, we've had different shears I've had different curtains. One of the things that I like is to be able to kind of see what's going on outside. At some point I had the regular shear, you know, like the polyester shear that everybody had. Then I changed that to opaque. It didn't really work for me. Uh, then I had something else. I can't remember what it was. And now I have these lace. So then what I did was look around and Really what I want is to have a cohesive first floor and the only way to do that is to have a repetition or a echo of the style. So in my living room, uh, I have those sheer panels, right? And I took down the curtains because I thought it was just too heavy. And it's these. So I figured if I wanted to have a cohesive look, uh, what I need to do is basically have the same ones. And that's what I did. <laughs> I purchased the same ones. Um, so I'm gonna install those. They're exactly the same length, which is between too short and too long. I don't know if that makes sense. When I purchased those, I didn't want them to go all the way down to the floor, but I also didn't want them to be right at the window. So I took the size in between. It looks funky at first, and then you get used to it, and it actually makes sense because it no longer blocks the baseboard, uh, which is at the bottom for the heat. You don't want that. You don't want the heat to get behind the curtain and stuck there by the window. You want the heat to be able to go into the room. So it's the same length. These are 84, so they don't go all the way down, but they are below the window. And then I thought about curtains because I like to have drapes. Um, I removed the ones that I had in the living room because I just felt that they were too heavy. So in order for me to have drapes, I knew I needed to get something much, much lighter. And um, if I wanted to have a style that was never clashing with anything else and have a nice continuation, it had to be a one color and no pattern, all right? So what did I get? Cream velvet. Not just cream velvet, I got cream velvet with, <laughs> I love those, the pom-pom trim. So those will go all the way down to the floor, which is pretty much what I have now. The panels go over to the floor and then the sheer um, is a little bit higher. So let me show you everything I got and we're gonna get started. So I bought two sets of those and as they were removed from the box, it's clear I'm gonna have to partake in the worst activity in the world for me, I kid you not, I'd rather clean toilets, um, is ironing. So I have two panels, they're gonna go over there and then I have another set of two panels here they're gonna go on the other window. 
these are all the shears so for the shears i have um a set for here and then i have two sets for here because this is a double window and then i thought about what am i going to do with regards to these since they are wider than the ones i have right now i can actually close them um what do i do when they open and i wanted to get some kind of hold back thought about it for a while and then realized well i don't really want to add tassel it's going to be too much and then i looked at what i had up there which is those uh, dark uh, burnish bronze squares and i figured you know what let me get something that matches and i did i found these uh, instead of having pompons fabric um, rope I got these so these are wall mounted and very obviously it's going to take me a while to put them um, up and then the last thing is a replacement shade so first what i'm going to do is take everything down and i'm going to replace the shade and then i'll go and iron all of my um, drapes now the drapes themselves i got them in 95 which is a little bit too long and i don't want them to pull on the floor um in a regular house probably but i have pets so and a white <laughs> or cream so that's not happening and what i'll do is that i'll keep the rings um, that i have up on the um, curtain rod and i'll take the panels the current rods are 92 inches uh, from the top to the bottom so here is the regular top of the curtain and this is exactly three inches where they have the um, rod pocket so I'll just fold them at the rod pocket like this and attach my rings and my clips and that will give me exactly the length that I want without having to cut and resize so let's get started I'm removing all of my current window treatment And again, there's really no other way for me to do this but to be constantly backlit, okay? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. The new ones are an even more interesting concept. They are actually uh, on a uh, glue uh, strip. So I have to remove the old uh, brackets here. And I tell you what, if you're renting, that's ideal because you don't have to drill anything. so interesting to me because when you <laughs> look at the uh, naked window you can see all the different setups that people have had over the years um, <laughs> so these these were mine uh, this one here and this one there don't know what that is don't know what that is these were probably from a previous guy the one we had uh, before us had them here so there's like maybe four different owners uh, window treatment on display here. Um, anyway, so let's install it. So this is the new one. And basically what you do is that you measure and then you cut. You take a uh, saw or whatever, obviously not scissors, they say. And you cut where you need. And that little uh, piece here at the end pops out so you can replace it. And once you're ready to install, you just peel off the sticker that's on top here and you just uh, glue it right on the window frame. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
finally. Okay, so it goes all the way down, good, and then it goes back up. Two years, I tell you, two years. I can enjoy some light now. Perfect. Let me put the shears on this and then I'll take a break. So they're on and you can tell they are right above um, the baseboard. Let's go look at the ones in the living room. They're not on the same bracket. Okay, so these are a little bit shorter, but that's because I put them on the main bracket, not the one that's meant for the shears. So if I want them the same length, all I have to do is put them on the, um, on the different bracket. And I think that's what I'm gonna do, that way everybody is at the same height. And I like that height, actually, because, again, it leaves the um, baseboard open. Excellent. All right, so we have one window that is fully operational. It's about time. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a totally different look already. <laughs> um, oh, it opens up the room. Okay, I'm taking a break. I will see you when I come back. I'll have the rest of the drapes uh, from the other window down and those I don't need to replace the shades and I probably will have the curtains ironed um, or maybe I'll take you downstairs and we'll go do that and then we'll install the drapes we'll look at it we'll install the um, brackets and I'll be done and I can scratch that project off my list so I just installed just the shears and you can tell the light is totally different uh, in the room. Look at that. It's already, and it's nasty out. It's really gray. Um, but I'm still backlit. Um, but it's, I don't even have the ceiling light on. So much brighter. Okay. Um, be right back. You know, it truly is amazing <laughs> how much brighter it is in here right now. Um, and it's still gray outside, so I can't wait to see it with the sunshine. Uh, bottom line is this, okay? Uh, in another one of my um, decluttering frenzy, it appears that I let go of all, of all my rings with the clip. The uh, I call them crocodile clips. Um, so what I had to do was take out the black ones, <laughs> from the previous uh, curtains and I'm reattaching them to the new curtains. Um, so that's delaying me <laughs> a little bit. So what I'm doing really is take the top, remember this is where the rod pocket is and it's exactly three inches and I need them to be 92. So I'm just folding it this way and I'm attaching my ring to the top here and I'm just doing about seven stitches um, to affix it and then I'm just dispersing them along the length that's it and then because I don't want the part right here to be a little flat once that's done I just attach those two together so it looks more cohesive and put together um, so let me show you how to do one ring and then um, I'll do all of the curtains iron them now first I'll at least put one up to see whether or not the length is correct, it should be. And then I'll iron them and put them back up. And then I'll probably stop there, come back at a later time, one evening, um, and then I'll install the uh, brackets. But I'm pretty glad that I'm actually getting this done and off my list.
Okay, so sure, they need to be um, ironed. Okay, you can see. But I think the length is perfect because they're not touching the ground. And they're actually right at the uh, bottom part. So this is great. I hate ironing. Not for anything. I really do. <laughs> It's practically impossible for me to show you how much brighter it looks without being backlit. Um, let me see if I close the shade. Maybe we'll have a little bit more light or less light. Nah, backlit. Okay, well, I really like the contrast here between the two. Um, I think you can tell they've been iron, except, you know, it's my job, <laughs> so it's not perfect. Uh, the length is great. Um, look, there's a whole area here that I got to go back onto. For some reason, they didn't get iron. Actually, the first one I did, which is this one, is much... Oh, wow. Okay, I got to redo this. <laughs> I really don't know how to iron. Uh, maybe if I close them, you'll see better. Okay, so the good thing about this is that I can actually close them. <laughs> As opposed to the other one. So we got actual curtains. And then remember that I have um, those tie backs. Let me pull one out so we can see what it looks like. So here's one tie back. So you can either keep them straight like this, right? Or you can do them um, at an angle, right? Uh, or you can do them straight like this. I think I'm going to do them straight. But you see how it echoes? What's all the way on top here? So I got lucky in finding those actually. They were cheap. They were like less than 10 bucks for two of them. Let me see if I can show you the color a little bit better. Let's see, it's like a, a, a dark brown, almost black, with some kind of bronze on it. Um, okay, so I'm done for today, at least for me. Um, I'll come back another day, because this is not a marathon to finish a whole project in one day. And what I'll do during the week is finish the other curtains, re-iron this one. Um, I got some cleanup to do here. When I come back, um, I will be done with the curtain, so you'll see the two windows done. And I'll just assemble or uh, place those, um, I already lost it, <laughs> um, metal tie backs. I'm actually glad that I didn't go for the big tassels. Um, it would have been just, yeah, too much. It's brighter. I think this is, um a classic timeless look you know it it's not something that's it's not a fad it's not a trend it's not something that's gonna go out of fashion yes it's traditional that's it um it brightens up the room i like it very much now i only bought two for the other side um, back in the day when I had the other curtains, I had actually four. Each window had two. It was just too much. We never closed the curtains anyway. Um, I just wanted to have full curtains instead of just decorative panels. So it really doesn't matter whether or not the two of them, they should meet, but they're not going to be very pleated because I'm having them extend throughout the whole window. Uh, I just want to have curtains that, again, don't look like I ran out of fabric, which is what happened with the other ones. So when I come back, I'll finish the job, I'll install those, and I'll finally be able to scratch one item of 
my to-do list and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next okay so be right back believe the difference it makes in terms of lighting it's a small switch but a huge payoff <laughs> and i did clean my lens i apologize for little dots you know i use this camera every day to film in the garden and you know filming in the garden when you have the camera on the ground as i'm digging stuff it's bound to have mud or whatever and um i should have checked that out but anyway it's done and i really like it and everybody does think in the house that it's brightening up the room and i think you can tell it's brightening up the room um even though it's again a great day <laughs> uh it's been horrible in north jersey for the past two weeks it's like it's cold and windy and we got rain but anyway we're not here to discuss the weather um it was an easy job you know it would have been done much faster if I didn't have to uh, reattach the rings um, so yeah I decluttered <laughs> my other rings and I'm stuck with uh, these now but that's okay um, I decided you probably noticed already not to put the brackets um, I felt that even though they were matchy matchy it's just too much it's just too much I'm trying to simplify and again i've decluttered so much um already i i just don't need to bring more stuff this is simple it's a simple look it's a clean crisp look and i'm actually thinking since i have to uh bring the shears in the living room down uh to the regular shear rod uh i'm gonna get the same ones the same panels with the pompons on the side for the living room so that way both rooms will have the same curtains but i'll do that off camera um so that was my little project my uh, getting things done home edition let's scratch that off <laughs> yay um i don't know what i'm gonna do next it's all depending upon time availability i have some jobs that are very simple and small and other jobs that require stripping paint, sanding, repainting. So those jobs require obviously more time. I have to look at the list um, because I'm gonna film next weekend one video. I'm gonna try to put one getting things done home edition video per week. Um, and if you're wondering what's the next big project, once I'm done with the secretary and the secretary, I think I only have three videos left. It's going to be the Etsy uh, processing center downstairs because um, it's hot. It's going to be summer and that's the cold room. So I'm going to be nice and comfy down there. <laughs> and then once the weather cools down again, uh, sometimes in September, I'm probably going to do the vanity in my bathroom. So these are my big projects for the year. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this series already. And this was maybe one of the longer videos because, you know, it entail different things uh, the next one may be very short you never know but if you like it and you're looking forward to the next one give me a thumbs up you can subscribe right here in the corner and hit the bell button so that way you get notified when i post a new video whether it's part of this series or something else uh, lately i've been posting four videos a week that's quite a lot <laughs> you know when i said i was going to do a patreon channel everybody who 
didn't plan on joining Patreon said, oh, that's it for YouTube. And I promised you guys I was going to post at least two videos a week and that nothing would change on YouTube. And guess what? Nothing changed and now you have four videos a week. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> That doesn't mean I don't want you to join my Patreon. Okay, so if you want a more intimate look at my life and my family life and exclusive content, patreon.com slash my great challenge. Link is down below to support this channel and the Patreon. And down in the description box, I've also linked my two Etsy shop, um, vintage finds and channel merch and the curtains and the sheer panels that I just purchased and the uh, um, window shade. So check it out down below. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.